we're planning on a panel for the fall um, on this topic. But at the same time, we're also studying ourselves. We're reading the new Jim Crow um, on a, you know, different books uh, and articles and chapters about, not just about performance in prison, but also, like for example, the book that we're reading right now, it's called The New Jim Crow. It's about, you know, the creation of a whole new caste system in the United States. Oh, wow. With, you know, with imprisonment as well. So, so we're sort of, it's a combination of self-educating and researching and reaching out to people like yourself who were involved in this process as well too. Okay, uh, so let's start it from the beginning. Uh, so actually, uh, acting class was one of my uh, first class, maybe it's the first one forever that I joined program, a, any type of program. Uh, the reason I joined this class, not because I want to be involved with acting class or get to learn the new skill or anything like that. I just want to get a certificate at the time because uh, I go, I supposed to go to Pro Bowl soon. So I'm, I'm at the time, a lot of new law passed. So uh, for okay. especially for you offender, and I was a minor when I came into the system. And so I, I, I need the certificate and I, you know what? Uh, so. I asked my friend, Louis, he the one that put me into that class, actually. So I just asked uh, people I, I know, I said, look, uh, can anybody put me into any type of class and this certificate will be really, really bad because I need to go to see Pro Bowl soon. And so uh, I joined the acting class and next thing you know, my I think my folks there, they put me onto the stage and standing in front of a whole bunch of people watching me, I had holding my script and reading script and performing and so, uh, actually, I didn't do it good because of my accents at the time, and my English wasn't that good at the time. And so I was so scared. I like I, I literally st stood up on the stage and shaking. I was so scared because of like this is something I never done before. Like what what did I involve myself into? So I remember I was shaking and mumbling. I don't know what I say in the paper, and everybody on the stage started laughing at me, making fun of me. I, like, I got so scared, and you know what? And, on that day, I came back like I'm not gonna join this class because I don't think this class for me. And so I I quit it. At the time, I quit it. Uh, and then uh, one of my classmates keep coming to my 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 cell and asked me, "Hey, why why you stop going?" I told him, I said, "Look, I'm this program not for me. I just go in there for certificate, but I I'm not really enjoy that program because I hated that program." And so uh, well, uh, so he I think the uh, next time he came. Back, came back, he said, hey, uh, the director, uh, which is Maddie from Streamboat Laboratory, say, hey, uh, she want to talk to you. You want to quit? You got to go over there and talk to her and that you want to quit. I'm like, okay, so fine. So I went over there to the gym in VR. So I told Maddie, I said, look, uh, I want to quit this program. I don't want, can you please take my, me out from the list? And she's like, okay, so well, before you quit, let me say something, a few things before you quit. I was like, yes, sure. So I sat there and she, talk, she told me, she said, look, uh, I'm a girl. And I used to be scared just like you. I was crying on the stage. And I just, exactly what happened to to, uh, to you, it's happened to me, everybody. So we've been through the same process. So just just believe me and, and just be, take your, uh, maybe you should just, not perform right now, maybe just sitting on a stage or whatever, do whatever. You don't have to perform, you don't have to do anything. Just watch people uh, performing. How, how about that? You say you want here to be here for a certificate, just be here for a certificate. And then I can, at the end, I can write you a good certificate before your pro hearing. I'm like, okay, fine. So I don't have to perform right now, right? I said, yeah. I'm like, okay. So I, I'm like, all right, I give myself a chance to stay. Then, okay. She said, yeah. So that's exactly what happened. And then, um, my field pro here, and I went, I got a certificate from Maddie. She said a lot of good things in there. And I went into the, to the uh, pro hearing. I was so scared, I was shaking because I didn't, my public speaking, I have no skill whatsoever, especially in the group setting. I used to live in 180 level four the whole time, which is level four, and there's no entire class going on. We've been locked out all the time, so interact interacting with a lot of people is not my thing at the time so i i like you know I can't, a lot of stuff i learned but i can't be able to express it i can't be i can't be able to bring it out and especially when you're nervous you forgot the whole thing you sit there and you just 
plan out and you have no idea what you you doing and so that exactly what happened at the time so they asked me a lot of questions i can't be able to to answer them and so i was denied for five years because uh, i i performed very poorly in the uh in the pro hearing so um because they said i didn't take full responsibility uh i told them that i, I was i didn't i wasn't the guy that committed uh, the murder and i i'm just there when at that time that happened i literally i, I just deny everything I'm like you know i didn't i didn't kill nobody i in here for like uh pretty much i blame on the system i blame on the the, the person that died i blame on everything i just deny everything so i didn't take full responsibility but at the same time i just so scared and they said they told me they said look uh First of all, you need to go to go go back to uh, your yard. When they did, after they did deny me, they told me they give me some advice. They say uh, you need to learn how to do it public speaking. First of all, because you 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 so scared right now, and you, you not perform well. At that first thing. The second thing, we deny you not just that, but mainly because of you not fully take responsibility for your action and a lot. And so uh, that is a big part. So that's why we not, we deny you for five years. So when I came back to acting class, I was so mad at myself because I can't be able to give them the, the answer I want to give them. And especially when I was nervous, and I know that my one of my witness is do public speaking in front of a lot of people. And so uh, it's happened to be that on that day that I came into the acting class again, and the guy that did the singing, uh, so that day he got sick. And then, so um, when he gets sick, and the guy, uh, Mike, I give me Michael's toast. Hey, uh, somebody need to take over his uh, position. Somebody need to sing that part. And so nobody, nobody uh, volunteered to do it. And out of nowhere, I remember. I at the time I was so angry at myself. I was so mad. And like, uh, and so also I know my weakness. So, and because of the the um, the frustration and angry, I think it gave me a lot of courage at the time. And Next thing you know, when the part of the guy that's supposed to sing, I came out there and stopped singing and surprised everybody. Everybody, people was laughing and, and they're not just enjoying it, but also it just, it, they just in shock and everyone, la even Mary, she was crying. Everybody tears coming out because they, they laughing so hard at the time because of, uh, I don't know what they, I do exactly, but everybody laughing. So at that moment, I feel not to feel joy, but also I think, that's helped me a lot, get me out of my comfort zone. Like, you know what, I think I can do it. I, I can do this class with here. So I, like, you know, I told uh, people, uh, Mary and Michael, I said, look, I want to perform this and that. So like, okay, well, you can take that same role the last time that you 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 uh, you came on the stage and you you work on it. So I like, okay, fine, I cannot do that role. So that's my journey start from there. And then at the end of that uh, program, I felt so much inspired. It's like uh, how do how do I put it? Like it just so feel amazing within myself. Like I proud not just proud of myself, but like when you acting, you performing, and you see everybody laughing and crying, and give you a lot of good, uh, positive feedback on the stage. It makes you not just happy, but like um, inspire you a lot. And so that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. So the next acting class. The moment I again, they, like they, they saw they, they saw the poster on the wall. I say, hey, uh, acting class coming on this day, blah blah blah. I signed up right away. Which is the father and son that you saw uh, when you came to be Lancaster be your. So uh, uh, that's when I met uh, Elizabeth and and uh, Mary. Uh, uh, no, not Mary, but uh, Leah and Whitney and a uh, whole bunch of people there. So that class pretty much helped me a lot. It. Uh, so one one role i was acting very funny and the other role i would pretty much put me into uh the very emotional stage at the time which is my my own experience uh, of being a uh, father and son with my, with my own father my the, the story of my father uh and me doing the uh, visiting a uh, setting at the time and so uh it's helped me not just uh understand about my uh my story what my father been through but also help me bring out my emotion my true emotion and 
and then I next thing you know I become uh, um, it's helped me a lot of things in life actually I do I start to go into different group different program and I can be able to express myself uh, sincerely and, and fully and so whatever program that I, whatever program that out there I just want to do it and I'm no longer afraid and because I, I believe in my within myself that I can do it so if I can do it after class I pretty much can do anything else uh, yeah I have so much confidence within myself when you succeed one thing it gives you more confident confident so uh, that's exactly what happened in court so um, being in court being an attorney for myself without knowing any law I got to go back and read any law that that have it in the, uh, in my uh, facility at the time is very limited. So I got to or ask people around me to give me law on anything that related to my case. So I learned and practicing do same thing like how I did acting. So I I did a lot of hearing and, and not just study about the law, but have to practice within myself and, and I have to be visualize what I supposed to be in court, be how I supposed to be in as an attorney. So which is help a lot. So every time when I come out to the my courtroom, I can be able to express it and, and perform it, not perform it, but uh, talk about it in the way that I kind of like did it in my brain before I came out to court ready. It's the same thing like acting uh, skill. So which has helped a lot. And so that's how I, I uh, connect with the judge at the time. That I uh, One of my good judges, her name is Tara. So uh, at first she didn't like me because of my cram. So I got to raise my hand a few times and she ignored me the whole time and finally she allowed me to, to speak. So I, 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 I talked a little bit and she said, no, uh, she, she was going to shut me down. She was going to send me out. She said, look, Mr. Quinn, if you say anything that's not relevant for this court right here, I'm going to send you out. And I said, okay, you, uh, I, I told her that, look, Your Honor, I just want to say a few things before we started because, you know, uh, uh, my case is very complex, so that's why I want to express it before we, we started. I said, go, so she told me, go ahead. So I spoke for like, I think like 10 minutes, and I think she felt it. She felt it because at the time I wasn't planning to say the way I say it, but I just say it in the sincere way that exactly what happened to me and what I've been through. And so, uh, she, so she told the government, like, go back and look at my allegation again to see anything wrong so they can change it. And then next thing you know, the government came back with another language that's more harsh than it was before. And so I had to make uh, another speech up on the stage in front of the judge. And I told her exactly what happened to my, my case. And I told them that, okay, so uh, pretty much like I told them I was very young at the time. And it's not just that. I was, uh, I just got to fit in. When I first came to America, I didn't speak the language, anything. And especially my father, I don't know him much when I came here. My, he escaped Vietnam when I was four. So because of the separation of my mom and my father, I, uh, and my, especially my mom got to stay behind Vietnam and I came over here, it's very stressed me out. And so uh, at the time I didn't know, at the young age, I don't know how to deal with my situation. I didn't know how to make the right choice. I should look at the. Uh, I should listen to my father more and work with him instead of like like go against him about the whole situation because my father got not, not to again me. He, he just have that issue with uh, like he. It's just that one problem him and my mom got not to do with me, but I took it in the wrong way. So that's that's why I choose not to uh, stay at home and hang out with the the people that I ha hung out with, and uh, so I told her that I didn't you know even committed a crime at the time, but however, I took the full responsibility because of my action at the time for joining the gang and influenced my gang and and, and uh, especially called my friend up to school and that's when the murder happened and that's just caused everything and I'm the, I'm the, even though like uh, I wasn't the one that committed the crime, but I, I was the one that made the decision to call my friend up, so it's Part of that, it was my fault. So, next thing you know, the judge she uh, she saw that I was crying, and she 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 like, you know what? I, I give you another another shot for uh, for a waiver for uh, which is twenty nine two hundred nine C waiver is the green card for the green card. 
So I was so happy just to get that. And not, it's not over. I know it's a long shot. And so uh, I applied for the win call. And then next thing you know, we go on the court, back and forth, back and forth. And next thing you know, I call Mr. Hughes and I call, ask Mr. Hughes, to, like, hey, anybody, like, can, can anybody come and support me and help me with my case? That would be nice, isn't that? So that's when Mr. Hughes called Elizabeth, which is which one of my the, the old director. And they came and they helped me and next thing you know, I won the case. And I know without them, I wouldn't be able to sit here today and talk to any of you. And I was so uh, thankful for everything, especially Elizabeth, thank you so much. But uh, to answer your question is like, I don't think that you guys lack on anything in there. Uh, so we pretty much, we need any type of resource inside anything that you guys doing so far is, is pretty much help at a loss it's not just um some people might learn fast the other people might learn slow like me i took me a while to to really go out there and perform well so uh i think it just depends on it individual when they they hop over to that stage of being comfortable with their cell or not to be able to go out there and perform well so uh this not it's not just a performance. This is not just about acting out. It's more like give us hope and confidence within ourselves to do something. And uh, acting is like one of the um, one of the most useful therapies, uh, program, uh, public speaking, and and um, uh, help people dealing with their own emotional struggle. Like myself, I don't know how to express my emotion and acting pretty much bring me out of my different the whole different level i can be able now today i can just be able to smile cry or laugh i can be able to uh show my emotion um sincerely without holding it back so that's the one thing is very healthy type of program to be honest hi uh, thank you so much uh, Way. That was very moving, what you just described. How this work enabled you to to go in deeper inside and to call on your own powers and resources and some of the abilities you didn't know you had. You know that yeah, yeah. that confidence. So, 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 you know, we talk about this in terms of resilience, um, and I'm sure you've come across that term, trauma informed and resilience, and how. You know, some of the aspects of resilience is like to be able to be present, to be able to call on your decision-making powers, to be able to have more confidence. So I was just you know, wondering if you could maybe talk a little bit more about, you know, the process of doing this work, the, um, the, the performance work, how that, you know, again, helped you to, to, to go deeper inside and to you know, call on some of your own resources and strengths uh, for a situation like this. Okay, so this is what happened. So uh, when we did the father and son, uh, I wrote the, uh, I wrote uh, most of the, the script, and one of my friends he, uh, he edited it. So uh, going through the process of my true story of what I've been through with my father at the visiting room, the first time he came and visited me. And so uh, pretty much it's like when you put something down in paper and pen, you have to, I, I have to sit there and thought about my feeling and thought about the, as what exactly happened at that time. And so it's kind of like bring back, uh, refresh my memory a little bit. And next thing you know, when we practice, I remember when I seen their practice back and forth, back and forth with my friend. And so uh, it gave me a lot of insightful uh, at the time of what we've been through and some of the stuff I, did, I didn't even know that it was there. And so uh, as we, as we uh, had the conversation, it not just bring back the story, but also bring out the emotion of the time at the time that I have my father, and also it's helped me recognize that emotion when I I when I talk with my father, and so uh, there 
so many times that I was on the on the on the stage and even on the practice rehearsal, I was my tear came out because of that, and it helped me recognize that emotion right away, and uh, it gave me a lot of, of uh, like such a empathy, empathy toward my father what he been through. So when in real life when you 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 interact with your family. It just happens so fast, and you don't have time to really uh, dig deeper inside or try to understand what really, what what really what happened. So, but when you do acting, it's pretty much like you keep practicing and you keep try to bring it back whatever you've been through, and so give me the the, the uh, understanding of not just me but also my father, my father what he been through and how he feel at a time when I been locked up and how did he react to it and how did he emo his emotion more his emotion involved into it even thought of the my friend he was he, he not my father however um get to look at him and him he been present and i i picture him as my father this guy helped me uh understanding about what he been through just to come to the visit took the time and waiting outside and just in there and then and, and, and especially my father was quiet so much at the time and it, it, it bring back a lot of my memory it bring back a lot of the the um, of what he been through at the time and so that's just helped me like oh yeah a lot of stuff I've been blaming him or it's a lot of stuff that I um, a lot of uh, the lack of communication that we have at a time when I was outside with him. So it made me thought, think about my father more and more and more and it helped me like, okay, so understand of him more and give me a lot of compassion toward my father and a lot of love toward my father, what he helped me and what he been through during the time that he like tried to escape Vietnam. It wasn't hard, it wasn't easy for him just to leave the country with like, his kid behind and then came over here with a, a country that didn't speak no language and then have to uh, send the money home and bring me back over here and try to raise me with his best and especially after so long we haven't seen each other he don't he don't know much about me i don't know much about him it's helped me in the process of, of like understand more about my emotion and, and all the people emotion and sitting there and just to like when you do acting you get the the, the 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 emotion feedback from like I get the emotion feedback from my friend, so that has helped me like being aware of his emotion, same same as my emotion. So that has helped me a lot. So when one of my friend when he start like crying or he looked like his face sad or even when he was like sitting like came in and maybe he smiled or some something like that or on the uh, uh, training, it's kind of like help me pay attention to those awareness. So those are the things give me the tool to, to pay attention to little detail like that. This is really interesting to me. There's a couple things I wanted to ask you. Um, first off, you'd mentioned, I want to get to your father, but the first thing I want to ask is, you had said the first time you got on stage, people laughed and it made you not want to get back on stage. But then you had this experience with the parole board where it didn't go well, you weren't confident, and you realized the need inside of you to get on stage. And the second time people laughed again, but it felt good. It was a different kind of laughter or dynamic. And so what was the difference between uh, the first time and the second time? I kind of have my own idea, but I wonder, was it, was the difference that you changed, that the audience changed? Was it both? Like what, how could you describe that difference between the laughter making you want to leave the stage and the laughter making you want to stay on stage? The first time, uh, first of all, I don't know a lot of people in that ethnic class. And so uh, they would laugh at me because at the time I thought that they, they are judging me for like uh, my uh, my illness, my uh, performance, being scared on the stage and look funny on the stage. So so many things 
that I thought at the time that what happened, and I thought that they was like kind of like um, making fun of me, not really like enjoy my performance or maybe not enjoy my presence up there on the stage. And so uh, the second time when they laughing at me, so at this stage, pretty much I already, I already like, okay, I know that they laughing, it not that they making fun of me. They pretty much they enjoyed my performance. They laugh, isn't that? Even later on, later on when I was in acting class and I did something funny, they making fun of me. They uh, they laugh at me of my amusement uh, movement or whatever. I still enjoy it because uh, I think part of me at the time when I first joined the program, I was still very insecurity. First of all, very insecurity. And uh, so I wasn't a transformed person to like taking the negative feedback uh, in the in the positive way. I look at them, I like, oh yeah, somebody like got to put me down. Instead, of, like now, like today, if I do something funny and I do something wrong, people laugh at me. I would say, hey, oh yeah, that's that's funny here, yeah, this and that, blah, blah. So I would enjoy it for what I did wrong. I would be more opened up. I would be more positive about it because it's pretty much it's like. Today, the level of my transformation is, is different than before. At the time, I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't ready for that negative feedback. I wasn't. Uh, I still have a lot of insecurity issues I still have to deal with, and especially with my uh, being up there. And I don't, I, especially I don't have, I don't stand a lot of my emotion at the time. So a lot of stuff that I'm dealing with is held in within my own. And so when I when somebody like put me down or like have a negative feedback of my what I'm doing, I would like react react in the in the negative way. The second thing that stood out to me was with your father. I didn't quite. You had mentioned um, with the judge. You know when you when you told your story. Um, a lot of it really went back to your father. Like, I didn't really want to be home. And this group of people appealed to me for various reasons, um, the gang. Um, and then in father and sons, like speeding up time, being incarcerated, being in this, um, <laughs> in father and sons writing this scene, it also went back to your father. So a lot of your healing uh, maybe a lot of your pain came from that relationship, but then your healing came from being able to write this scene and put yourself in your father's shoes. Do you feel like your relationship with your father uh, from the pain to the healing had a lot to do with um, just, I know you don't want to blame your father in any way for being incarcerated, but when you look at why maybe you made some of the decisions you did in terms of joining the gang and, um, and then the decision toward um, kind of forgiveness and healing, does a lot of it come from your relationship with your father? Am I, am I right in, in, in seeing that? Yeah, so uh, I blame I blame on my father for so many things at the time, and uh, even like for a long time, until um, until I start to like taking classes, and especially go to acting class, and after that I taking a lot of classes and uh, writing my own story, and then try to understand about my own life, and so. Uh, the blaming is always like was one of my big part at the time that I, I blame and not my father, but any, anything that I did wrong, I start blaming on people. Uh, so it's so easy to blame, so easy to blame on somebody because you you never think, oh yeah, at the time, I never think, oh yeah, I, it's what my fault. I always blame on somebody. It's, it's just so easy that like, I make me feel kind of good to blame on somebody because like I always blame, on, hey, I was young, this and that, and I, and, and you did this, I did, that's why I did that. It's kind of almost like a tantrum uh, when you were a kid. So uh, I blame on he, my father, I blame on the victim that died, I blame on uh, a lot of people in my life. And then, so 
not until later on when I start to join acting class and involved with the like, different classes and and uh, understand more about my life. Uh, so I start to realize that the only one person that I should blame is mainly should be myself, but I shouldn't blame myself either. Because not a good blame on myself when then you say it's not it's not a good uh, thing to do. So I just have to accept everything that I've been through, forgive everybody, forgive the people that did me wrong, and for, forgive myself for this wrong to myself and this wrong to all the people. That the only healthy way to 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 move on with my life and just do that. So I think that's the only solution that I have uh, to get past this stage of blaming. So that is how I did it. I I stop blaming on other people. I stop blame stop blaming on my own, and I stop blaming on what I did wrong to other people. So uh, I can look at it as a, a experience in life and. I just learned so much from it, and I just, not just that, like, imagine that if I didn't go through this whole process right here, I wouldn't be able to learn a lot of great things in my life. I didn't have a lot of tools that I can deal with uh, a lot of situations in, in life today. So I, I, today I look at it's a, a, a learning lesson, it's a blessing uh, moment just to um, learn so much stuff. I don't want I, I I don't want to say that yeah it's a blessed moment that I've been to prison and this and that but it's more like a long it's a blessed moment that I learn of what I learned today and what I've been through and I just have to look at as a um, as the experience in life that everybody have to go through in their certain time of their life either it's good or bad you should learn a lot from it especially the bad one and if you you. You look at it, it's like it's the bad one. Most likely, it's stuck in your head and help you uh, uh, something that just move, help you the motivation to move forward more than just a good thing. Because when you're satisfied with something, you don't want to, you don't want to, um, you don't want to learn or you don't want to get any more from that. But when you you not satisfied with something, then more most likely you can uh, uh, get the. Uh, Try to figure out to to uh, get better, and same thing like me. Even though that uh, I I've been through the system, I wasn't uh, I wasn't done so well. Like uh, as far like career, relationship, and stuff like that. Right now at this point, but because I'm not satisfied, so now I'm just have to learn how to build that. Uh, within myself, and I have to have to make it better every time, especially what I've been through, you know. And uh, I look as it as a, it's just like a lotus that you just you live and you have to go into the mud, and you you have to to surround it by it, and you just the mud have you uh, give you the soil to grow, and then that's how I look at it today. And I've been what I've been through, which kind of give me the motivation to move forward, not just moving forward, but give me uh, the fight within myself. And and I'm 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 glad that okay. I learned so much stuff in life. Because also one of the things we're looking at is how participating in performance can help, especially can help us kind of confront so, uh, very unhealthy notions of manhood and manliness. And, uh, you know, I was wondering if, I mean, especially because as, on the one hand, it's about you and your father, it's about you're saying vulnerability, it's about emotion. And I'm wondering if, you know, there were some questions that came up in the process that performance really helped you overcome some of those very uh, stereotypical unhealthy ways that this society kind of forces us to buy into you know very unhealthy concepts of manhood and manliness in particularly in prison too but you know outside of prison of course too. Yeah. definitely uh definitely so uh race in the asian culture Pretty much a lot of emotion is we don't we don't share we don't express that even today talk to my family 
like once while I say, hey, I love your mom or father, like, I say so nothing. They don't even respond to that. They don't even like, hey, I love you too, son. Blah, blah, blah. Maybe once while you hear live with him there, but they don't, they don't show like that. The culture that we dealing with, like I know not just the Asian, but a lot of maybe a lot of different household out, out there too. Like they don't express it in the healthy way. Like they don't express their emotion in the family. They don't express. They need program like this to um, to really understand about their emotion, how important it, how important it is to to bring it out and to show your 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 friend or your loved one about what you feel and what you've been through. So that's where they can communicate with you in the healthy way. Because if you don't, you meet, you hold it back everything and and you certain thing you just hide in it and how how the other people can uh, read you not read but how the other people can understand you how they can uh, communicate with you and so a lot of the conflict and a lot of uh, thing that involved because of the miscommunication the lack of, of uh, and all that came from your feeling and emotion that helped your way of thinking how you say something and how you you deal with some way a lot of can, conflict came from that came from the lack of understanding uh, we are very similar. We as a, as a, I don't want to say as a, it's more like a, a human being. We are we are very similar when it come to uh, come with emotion. Every single one of us we deal with, dealing with uh, that, and some might be terrified to express it because they never have a chance to express it in the in the way that I like. Like how us we've been through theater program we express our emotion and we bring it out uh, we don't have no entire class that we can learn even you go to school today you can learn a lot of uh, knowledge you learn a lot from book you learn a lot of stuff we don't we, I mean call us maybe they have like a theater program that you can learn but not every class that they, they, they teach you about your emotions and especially in the in the household that you live in, if you have a healthy parent that can teach you how to learn about your emotion, how to explore it, and how to express it in the healthy way, that would be helpful for the society a lot. I have a question about that. I'm I'm really curious about the returning citizens and the reentry process as well as the programs inside. So, do you think that your family? would participate in a program in a class in a group or something like along with you to work on that uh like me personally i would love to do that with my family but i don't know that they're willing to do that that's the thing because yeah uh, you as much as you wanted something it doesn't mean that oh yeah another person wants to do it so uh to move into something new is the big part of everybody's <laughs> life uh same thing with me and uh, so even today moving from one state to another like totally new to me it's kind of terrifying but because of i've been what i've been through and i kind of know that and aware of that so sometimes i keep like you know even i'm terrified but i still step on it i still uh, uh it's give me uh it give me the fight within myself to move forward it give me the that 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 passion like hey you know what this is pretty much this is uh this is what you you dealing with with here so I kind of recognize it right away so uh but I would love to to see family out there that would uh, involve into the acting like the whole family involved and in acting together in the so that's that would be interesting to to see. Cool, I'm just curious if that was something that would you know be in a sense something that you would be interested in, in reaching out not just you but like you know thinking about other returning citizens of that idea of reaching into the community into our families that way as well yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you know i get a sense of the depth of the work that you and elizabeth were doing too so it's really wonderful yeah yeah so uh like today my uh one of my goal in life is is uh to start my own business in that uh but Sometimes I know deep down in my heart, acting is one of my one first, uh, I tried to use my thumb and what you call it as uh, one of my dream, that my, my first dream, that I, everyone, one of my passion, now one of my number one passion in business would be second, but I, the reason I choose to be uh, in business world because I feel like uh, 
that's something more, a little bit more easy for me to do it out here than acting because I don't have no resources. And I, I, so there's two cases. But I'm, I'm not, I'm not giving up on that dream yet. And I'm hoping that one day when I become successful and have enough funding and stuff like that, I would love to create some kind of acting program or maybe like create, produce my own film or something like that. Because I would love to be acting. Acting and, and create a theme or stuff like that. That's so cool. I I would I would support yeah. that and say, you know, keep writing because that's yeah. such a, a beautiful way of, of connecting with your story. If you you know continue to write, um, is that moment that you like so beautifully explained that 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 moment when you decided to go back to class when you like yeah. felt that need to and, uh, not just the acting part but that that, that draw for working on your communication working on your public speaking you know that moment i think is such a beautiful like snapshot of resilience you know and so that just expanding on that that moment because that's what really captured for me you know so if you were ever into into finding a topic to to write more about i think that would be yeah, that's, yeah. So uh, until all the way to today, I still not uh, uh, not all the way one hundred percent comfortable with uh, my public speaking because I still I have a lot of work to do uh, with that part. Yeah. A lot of time I fail when you know, on the stage. I just like yes, stay fine and with different setting. You know, it's it's, it's, it's some setting might be comfortable, the other setting might be terrified. And uh, sometimes, just to think about what I've been through, like as far as far like being active on the stage and overcame that at the moment when I got stuck, get the stage fight, it's helped a lot. Just to think about it, like, hey, you did acting before, you you didn't scare of that, why are you scared of this? So just to have that, that click in your brain at the moment, it's kind of like it's, it's, it's give you the the the, the push, a little push that enough for you just to perform and do uh, that. Uh, you can just speak like the flow just start to kick in with that with that little push right there, and that's I'm, I'm, I'm amazing how it is. I mean, it not work all the time, but most of the time it work. Just like just sometimes like I got stuck like I do public speaking up on the stage. I got stuck. I don't know what to say, and I don't. I know people like. A million people like their eyes watching me and you know kind of terrified just to they waiting for you to hey what you can say next and you got scared and you, next thing you know you got stuck so the moment that you you come down a little bit you think about hey you know you did a lot of acting before you you're not terrified why are you terrified of this so get a little bit of push like that is click your brain right away and like hey next thing you know you're like hey you can find something else to say talk about it like it's so easy no. Yeah. Tway, I, one of the things, I mean, that we do both, uh, Elizabeth and Lynn and myself, and we're, we're it's, so we're, we're doing this performance work as a way of developing skills constantly on a regular basis. And so what you're describing is exactly, you know, how this performance work can be so amazing in terms of developing skills. So how can we make this an ongoing, like, you know how, you know, people go to group sessions and therapy sessions, but how to have performance as a therapeutic model on a regular basis, you know, how to uh, okay, so. play with roles, how to, you know, make sure that we enact roles, how to, you know, work on. So this is kind of the thing that we're working on, you know, as the, on an ongoing basis too. Uh, just, yeah. Well, uh, so. As you as as I explained earlier, so uh, I think the, the 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 one thing that can be very helpful with that therapist thing is like I think it's not a lot. I think let uh, let the person do the 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 own role and play with their true life story with their true emotion. Uh, I remember at the time I took two different roles. Uh, the father and son. One is kind of like very sad. The other one is kind of like it's very joyful, funny. So um, I didn't realize until I, 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 I 
at first I just want to take a role because I didn't know, oh yeah, like I have to deal with this emotion until I, I, I practiced about it. So when you, um, when I did it, I think the, 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 the one role that's kind of helped me a lot is like uh, with my own story because pretty much it's like that's your story out there and that's how you dealing with your emotion and and it's like I, I explained earlier you go into the uh, it's refresh you a lot of stuff help you understand your emotion help you have a better understanding the better understanding of your situation at the time uh, so I did the, the one play the first play of the Afghanistan I didn't have I mean, I have a lot of emotion involved into that, but I didn't understand that a lot because that is somebody else's story, and it not it not uh, it not helping me dealing with my own emotion. Even though I I learned a lot through the process. So uh, the father and son of my own story it pretty much helped me a lot healing and, and understanding and, and uh, of my emotion at the time. So I think if we, we, we want to start a program, a therapist program, I would say that we start with our own story first and then later on look into the different role. So that's where they can deal with the emotion first and let them explore the, 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 the true feeling. And then that's going to expand to something else later on.